In this video, you'll learn a super easy way to add any blog content to any MailChimp email campaign. So let's get started. So I'm logged into my MailChimp account and to get started, we'll go to create a campaign and we'll just name this blog content demo and click create email. And then from here, we're just gonna click on design email. We're not gonna worry about any of that other stuff right now. We'll select our template and we'll select minimal. Now I am using the new beta builder. I'm not sure if it's still the beta builder. It's the new MailChimp email builder, not the classic legacy builder because it has this added feature called apps. And in order to get your blog content easily into a MailChimp campaign is using an app called Link Preview. So if we drag over our app block, it's gonna ask us to select an app and I've already connected Link Preview with my MailChimp account. You'll have to do that initially and only once. And then you just click on that and it'll load into that box. So how this works is that you'll grab a blog post URL, put it into the source file here, like so. It will auto-populate with the options that you have listed here. We've got image checked off, description checked off, and show a background. And you can also select the block size. So if you wanted to have it smaller or medium or the large, I like the large because it'll take up the full width. You don't have to just enter one. You can just duplicate this, change out the URL and add in as many blog articles as you want in your campaigns. Another way to get your blog content into any MailChimp campaign whether it's automated, A-B test, multivariate testing, is with an RSS feed item or an RSS feed merge tag. And to do that, you drag over a paragraph block here, and we'll just put that below our link preview, and go over to merge tags again in the new MailChimp builder. It will work the same in the old legacy mail builder, email builder. Scroll down the bottom here and click on RSS feed items. Now it will pre-populate with an example URL for your feed. You'll have to determine what that URL is for your type of platform, whether you're on Wix, Weebly, or WordPress. For WordPress, it's exactly what it is here. You just change out the URL. So we can put in HTTPS, LarrySnow.me, and that will be our feed merge tag. And what it will do, it will bring in the last five blog posts automatically from your blog. So if we were to look at this in the preview option, here is our nicely laid out link preview, which I love. And here is the not so nice formatted RSS feed items, but it does bring in your blog post automatically. So if you were to send out this email campaign, let's say you schedule it out, and you've updated your blog post, it will bring in the last five blog posts that are on your, in this case, WordPress website. However, the formatting is pretty lousy and it comes in with Facebook-like, a Google Plus-like. When was the last time we had Google Plus? And tweet is no longer a tweet, it's now an X or a post. I've, I don't know what it is. I still call it Twitter, but people might not be familiar with what tweeting is. So these are share buttons. So you can tweak this somewhat, by using a different method that MailChimp provides and that's called feed block. So let's close out our preview. To do the feed block, we have to go to a special resource page because it's not available in any dropdown or any option. So that resource, I'll leave a link in the description and that is feed block RSS merge tag. And what the difference is, is that you can customize it somewhat with the feed block options versus just that feed URL. There are some nuances to this. As we look here, we have to have the feed block start and a feed block end. And we also have to have a feed item. If we scroll down here, we'll have to have feed items and an end feed items. So I've got an example set up already, so we can go take a look at that. Again, we have that standard feed merge tag that you can get from that dropdown of merge tags. And then you can add some other pieces to that if you use these brackets. And again, there is a resource for that. And I'll leave that link in the description as well, where you can add in this bracket count three and you can specify a category. And obviously the count is specifying how many of that particular category you want to show in your campaign. So here is the feed block. 
As you can see here, we have to bring in the URL again. Then we have to do our feed items. Again, we can use that same element in here. We can do the count, how many, and we could also do a category if you want to specify a category as well. Then we have feed title and you can do some formatting to this. I've added a heading two in this case to the feed title so it's more visible. And I've also added a URL, a merge tag URL so that the feed item title is clickable. So if you take a look at that real quick, we have a feed item colon URL, that is a merge tag, feed item merge tag, whatever you're applying it to, go to that URL of that particular blog post. The next option we have here is content full. Content full will show the entire blog post, which is a really neat feature. So it'll bring in, in this case, the last three blog posts of my WordPress website when I send out this email campaign. So I can schedule it in the future. It will grab the latest three. So full content includes all of the text, all of the links, and all of the images that you might have in your blog post, as well as video thumbnails. I have another example here from my good friend, Mayanna Stevenson, who runs and operates blogaid.net. Only difference really is that I have something called feed item colon content text. And what that does is it brings in the description or the excerpt of your blog post. And the last example I have here is for those of you who are using Wix. In order to get the Wix RSS feed, you have to add in blog-feed.xml at the end of your URL. And I just grabbed this URL randomly searching for Wix websites. So let's go quickly take a look at how all this looks. So we'll click on preview. So the first one always comes in like that. I'm not sure why, but then the other two come in like this. And again, we have that like we have that Google Plus and we have the tweet. So that is the feed merge tag at the very beginning here. And then we can scroll down here. Then we have the full option. So the feed block full. So it brings in the entire blog post. What I don't like is all this extra spacing. So that's something to be concerned about. So that is one full blog post. And here's the second full blog post. And if we keep on scrolling down here, we'll see Mayanna Stevenson's version. You see here that she puts bullet points in her descriptions, her excerpts. So it comes in a little bit different. And at the very bottom here, we have our Wix option. So again, the, the nice thing about this is that it's automated in a sense that it will auto populate with the latest blog posts when you send out your campaign. The bad thing about this is the formatting. So my suggestion is play around with this, see how it pulls in from your website. You might have a different experience than I have. My recommendation is that you use the first option, that live preview app, if you're using the new campaign email builder with MailChimp. Love to know what your thoughts are on this. Post them in the comments below. Thanks so much for watching. Take care and I'll see you in the next video.